So I'm pretty sure most of you guys had stumbled upon at least once in their like careers and working with React with this error in here, particularly where it tells you, oh, you rendered more hooks than during the previous render. And that's simply telling you, oh, because you're calling hooks conditionally inside of your component, you simply can't do that. But have you ever wondered why can't we just call hooks conditionally and what's stopping us from that and why React is throwing this particular error? And the bigger question is, how does exactly React hooks work behind the scenes? Well, let's find out. So I'm sure like most of you guys actually got this error at least once while working on some of our projects or something using React. And where the error here is actually states, oh, you get like an expected application error and the error in here says, oh, you rendered more hooks than during the previous render. So if you have gotten that and you actually have been, you know, going through and struggling with all of that, but you never understood exactly what is the motivation and what does this error even mean? And why can't we just render hooks conditionally in React? So to better understand that, we gotta first understand how hooks actually work under the hood inside of like the React core and particularly inside of the render process for each component. So for example, in here, we got this simple diagram in here that showcases how components actually handle state, particularly hooks inside of the component, and how does it manage those hooks. So for example, in here, for instance, if you take, for example, this component number one, so component number one in here has, let's say, has three hooks in here inside of the component. So it uses like use states, like three use states, in here, right? So it uses and it calls three hooks. Now, how does exactly that works behind the scenes inside of React? So React, how does it manage the hooks and how does it call the hooks inside of that component number one. So behind the scenes, each component, each particular component holds an array of its own hooks. So all of these hooks, all of these like three hooks in here are gonna be added into the component hooks array. So it has like the component in here, gonna have an array, and each of that, so let's clear this in here, use state one, two, three, all of them actually are put and being tracked inside of this component hooks array, which lives inside of the component itself. I mean, technically it's not gonna be inside of the actual component, but it's gonna be handled as part of the components as part of like the react rendering process so each component is going to have its own array so using array in here is going to simplify the process of how the component would know which hook to call like every single time it re-renders or every single time you trigger a straight state change or something like that so what it keeps track of, it has like an index in here called the current hook index, which keeps track of the current hook, like the index or the order of the current hook that will be called. For example, in here, because we have got these three hooks in here inside of our components. So what does exactly happen inside of the component itself? They're gonna be having a particular order. So like first hook, second hook, and third hook. So all of them should have a particular order in here. And the order in here is gonna be saved inside of the components and gonna be tracked using a particular variable to know exactly which hook to call the next time it re-renders. And as simple as that, this is actually how hooks actually work behind the scenes inside of components and how each component knows which hook to call depending on the rendering process and what state change it uses actually an index and it keeps track of all of those calls the specific hook that changed. Now, this is a simplified version. Of course, it's a lot more complicated than that behind the scenes inside of like the React core and the rendering and everything. But this is just like a very simplified version of just using state inside of one component by React does a lot more things behind the scenes in there to manage, you know, the whole tree of components. Now let's imagine, for example, we do a condition. So let's try if we want to use condition. So for example, we do, oh, if condition equals true, we're going to go ahead and like render this use state in here, which is, you know, the third one has third index. I'm going to try to either render this or like, you know, call this or not call this depending on the condition. So why can't we do that? Remember, because actually for calling hooks and for components to be able to call the exact right hook in here, it needs to keep track of the order of the hooks that are being called in here. And inside of that index, it kind of like, you know, Joe goes to the array in here and tries to figure out the hook index and he just calls it out of the array. But I mean, if you sometime render this and sometime remove it, completely remove it, sometimes it's gonna be stuck inside of the array and sometimes it's not gonna be existing in the array at all. And that's gonna cost inconsistencies. And yes, that would throw an error. So that's why you see this particular error in here. You see, oh, rendered more hooks than during the previous render or something like that. So sometimes you render more, sometimes you render less. So that's basically why we see this exception. So to better understand this, let's go ahead and look at how React usually just renders hooks in hand. Just like take a quick for example. For example, in here, we got three states in here as we did before in our example. One that holds, oh, a low navigation, one to show more details and one to index of the current sculpture. So here, what we're doing is just basically going through a list of 
of like sculpture list in here, which has like a name, an artist name, a description, a URL of an image, and that's it. And we're gonna use the index that is being kept on this state on top in here. So right over in here in here, basically to go ahead and look inside of the sculpture index and actually grab the sculpture and eventually just render the details. And of course, using some buttons in here and just like stuff like that, it's gonna allow us either to, you know, move to the next article and we're gonna say, oh, if allowing navigation, we're gonna allow the user to move to the next article and so on and so forth. So this is exactly what it looks like. This is actually our example. We have like, oh, allow navigation. You can show details in here, but if you allow navigation, you can move between articles in here, which is just simply increasing the index inside of the state itself or you can completely disable that. Now, let's say for some really weird reason in here, we decided that we want to, oh, we want to use a low navigation in here. We want to just like, depending on that, we want to just go ahead and either render the use state or not. So for example, I can just remove this. I can comment this code. So this will tell it, oh, if you allow navigation, we're gonna just call this use state, otherwise we're not gonna call it. So that means this use state is being conditionally called. So if I save that, and if I go back in here and try, for example, to do allow navigation, boom, there you go, the magic happened and we got this, you know, rendered more hooks error than we like before. So to better understand how hook works behind the scenes and under the hood inside of React and how everything is being handled. So what we try to go through in here, try to go ahead and create like a custom version version of the use state. So instead of using the use state function or hook from React itself, we try to build our own. So this function in here, right here, you see it, this is actually just a very, very simplified version of how use state works. And all the things goes to actually to the React dev, the new React documentation in here, which has like a deep dive section in here that shows you this particular example. Of course, I, I tried to modify some of it, but that's basically how it's coming in here. And that's actually basically, if you want to like understand that fully, I really advise you guys to go ahead and look into that. Now, if we go back in here, so try to understand exactly the code in here, just quickly go through it. So we got a use state in here that's gonna take initial state, the same thing. It's gonna return the actual state and an actual function, a set of function. So here we have the handling of the state, actually we recall stuff and do a bunch of things. And if we just go in here, we have like a gallery. So this is actually our component that utilizes the use state we have on top, our custom own build use state in here. And we have like some functions in here. And for the rendering in here, because of course we're not using React, so we're trying to do an action mimic how we actually works in GSX by providing vanilla DOM manipulation methods in here. So we just basically provided like, you know, handler methods in here. And we have got a function called update DOM. This function here is going to call our component every single time. And this one is just actually going to go ahead and bind those like a low navigation button, which are like the buttons using get elements ID. So we're just trying to access this from the DOM itself. And we just try to bind those on clicks to, you know, whatever the output is being returned from the gallery method or components. And we just make it to work as it is in here. And of course, inside of the HTML, we just, so we're putting the actual HTML elements in here inside of the, you know, the HTML because we're not longer, we're no longer using React. So we can't render that using React. So we're just trying to mimic how React works. So that's basically why we're doing it this way. And of course, we're simply just calling this hooks use state. And because it uses DOM vanilla methods to manipulate everything, it's just gonna work. So if I go home in here and if we try to look at it, so this is actually an example. So if we go ahead and click on um, show details, we're going to see the details in here. And if we try to go in through like a low navigation, for example, so this actually we get that working perfectly. If we move to the next article, it works. So simply to understand how this custom use state works just briefly. So what we have in here, we have component hooks, which is our array where we're going to store all the hooks for this particular component. We've got the current hook index to be able to know which hook we're going to call next, like on the next render. So simply in here, when we call use state, we're going to use the initial state in here. We're going to first check if the pair is actually inside of the array or not. So if it is inside of the array, I'm just going to immediately return the pair by increasing the current hook index because, you know, we're going to call it the next time for the other one. Otherwise, if it doesn't, and it's actually the first initial render, we're going to just go ahead and create a pair. So we're going to put initial state, I'm going to put the set state in here, which is a function that's going to call the update DOM. Remember, the update DOM is the one that actually just binds like everything in here to like on click and it binds it to, you know, the on click we have from our components. And it puts like the SRC of the image, the you know text contents of the particular button in here, and so much more. So this particular part in here is usually just handled by React, but of course because we're not using React, so we have to you know mimic that way as well. 
So we update the environment here and also we make sure to put the actual next state because we're setting a state in here. So we have to update the state in here on the pair that we already have in here inside of the array itself. And of course, here we're going to be able to go and install the pair for the future renders and prepare for the next hook call. So we simply put the component hook with the current index, we put the pair inside of that one, and we increase this one for the next render or for the next hook. And eventually, we just return the pair. And of course, inside of a, a like custom made component here, we can call use state, we can just give it a, you know, the initial state in here, and we're gonna have the same pair, we're gonna have the value and the state index, the same way how use state usually works from react. And that is going to give us something like this, where everything just works seamlessly, like it was using react. Now, let's try the same thing. Let's try to conditionally like render or call our hook in here. For example, we put the index and the set index. And for the index hook in here, we try to use use state. And if you say, oh, if hello navigation, if it's true, go ahead and call the use state in here. Otherwise, just don't call it. So that means this hook in here is being rendered or called conditionally. And to better debug and understand how actually it works, we're going to just go ahead and do a console log. So we constantly log in here, the current hook index and the components hooks in here. Remember, this is actually an array that holds all the hooks of the current components inside of that array. So if we go back in here and try to go ahead and refresh, immediately notice that we have end defined. Why is that? Because we're conditionally calling the hooks in here. And if we check the console log real quickly, so what we have, we have hooks, we have like just two hooks. And in CF side of the array, we only have two hooks, we don't have the index hook, because this one is false, right? This one isn't checked. That means this particular one, this hook, the use state in here is not being called or not going to be like created whatsoever. So when we try to alone navigation, now it works, right? It renders, we can just go in and do like show details, and you can see the details. And for the logs in here, it tells you, oh, you have got three hooks. And the third hook in here is actually the one that holds the index. And if we just go ahead and, you know, move between the articles in here, the index is going to change in here instead of the hook as well as like, you know, the state in here. But as soon as we just, you know, remove that one, it completely becomes end of line. So that's exactly the issue that React tries to prevent from happening when you just conditionally render hooks. So if you just allowed conditionally rendering hooks, for us, there's actually what you're going to see, you're going to see undefined, the application is going to be having so much exceptions, the application state is not going to be logical, and it's not going to flow the same way it would do like when we have it this way, and everything would be super messy. And let's say as a bonus, we want to actually in our custom use state in here, we want to throw the same error in here, Con hooks are being conditionally rendered. How can we do that? So instead of the use statement here, what we can do, we can add a simple if statement in here that goes and uses the component hooks, which is an array, and it checks, oh, if the length is actually greater than the current hook index, we're going to simply like throw this error, the same error we have in there, I just added in here custom use state version, which is rendered more hooks than during the previous render. And if you save that, go back in here, try to go ahead and, you know, toggle this one, there you go, we get the error in here, and call error custom use state version rendered more hooks than the previous render. And that's just a quick explainer of how hooks works behind the scenes inside of React and why you can't render hooks conditionally. So anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you hopefully in the next ones.